So I feel weirdly excited to do this episode than like I've ever been. I'm so excited. <laughs> oh my god, my ear. This is gonna be... Oh wait, that's the wrong one. I'm so not ready today. Better? Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, I'm really excited for this episode. This is gonna be our online dating profile. Yes. That's why I actually put myself together today. Loves that. You look great. Oh, thank you. Someone the other day told me my hair looked like I just came from the beach. And I was like, that's actually exactly what I'm going for. So perfect. Perfect. <laughs> perfect. Um, real quick, I just need to touch on something. Have you heard Katy Perry's song Lifetimes? Of course. Bop. That transcends me so to good. heaven. So to a good. greater place. And such a better If that album from is gonna be one. anything what? It's oh, the first one was trash. Yeah. Tra Woman's World, trash. So bad. <laughs> she played us like a fiddle. Mm -hmm. But if that album is gonna be anything like Lifetimes, give it to I me. I think we're leaning to that. Give it to I me. think it's gonna be really good. It's so good. Mm -hmm. And like I'm listening to it and apparently she wrote that song like about her daughter. Yeah. <gasps> um which is so cute mm -hmm. but i'm listening to the lyrics and i'm like if anyone ever feels like this towards me that's all i could ever want oh i know <laughs> it's so good i listened to it like six times this morning i'm just like <laughs> it just vibey it like flows through my veins Such a so good i'm used to be a big Katy perry stan and then she went a little cuckoo we don't talk about I... the witness era <laughs> oh <laughs> Totally Illuminati, but we'll not go into that. Mm. I actually, I was shuffling songs and a, and a song from Witness came up and she's got like the third eye thing going on, like covering her eye. Mm -hmm. Illuminati. I mean, go obviously though, Teenage Dream album is one of the best pop records of all time. All time. Mm -hmm. All time. Put it in the top 10 pop. Literally. Absolutely. I saw her several times in concert and... It's you did. amazing. I like never I was, saw her. I was like ten feet from her. I had barricade. Oh wow. Oh yeah. Wow. Oh yeah. Did you go to that teenage so, um, dream tour? Yep. Wow. For that, I didn't have barricade, but it was still such a fun time. Mm -hmm. One of the best, like in person performances I've ever seen, was when she did Hot and Cold, and when she's doing it on stage. She changes outfits seven times on stage. Oh, my God. Like, she'll walk in front of, like, or behind a prop, and then she comes out with a new dress I on. I feel like and it's so amazing. or something. She does it in the video, in the movie, in the, like, the movie that she has. Mm, that's probably what I saw. She shows it. That was a great It's so amazing. So great, but so heartbreaking. I know. So real. But now that she has her dark, long hair back, mm, chef's kiss. That's where everything give turns it back me. around. <laughs> oh, I can... <laughs> I'm getting sweaty and thinking her about body it. right now. I mean, she always had a great sick. body, but like she so looks amazing. Unbelievable. <clears throat> Let's let me. <laughs> Unless Katy Perry wants to date me, I should stop talking about this. <laughs> I need to address something from like many episodes now that's deeply embarrassing that you called me out <gasps> for. And I also got a text from my friend Katrina about. <laughs> stop. Let's hear this. The drowning thing. Because <laughs> I know that everyone knew. <laughs> oh, they all heard. They all heard, Billy. You said drowning 16 times. And, like, you didn't stop saying it. No, like, I Drowning, think, drowning, drowning. Like, I guess that's how I say it. And I will never say that word again. Drowning, right? There you go. Okay. Yes. Good job. The, yeah. Just, I had yeah, it was to, bad. I had to fucking say that. <laughs> My friend Katrina texted me, like, around that time, and I meant to bring it up, but I kept forgetting, <laughs> and I made sure to put that on the top of my note list. Okay. Well, we addressed it. Billy made a mistake. He's learning. He's also dyslexic, so I'll give him a break. To okay. future mistakes. <laughs> yes, exactly. Peace, love, and light. <laughs> uh. Okay. I'm, like, really ready for this episode. I have questions prepared for us, like... We're going to get us a date after this episode. I'm putting it out there. A what? A date. People oh. are going to ask us on dates. Yeah. I wish that more people were less of a little bitch, if I'm being honest. I I can't imagine, and I'm not saying this to be like cocky or, you know, whatever. 
I can't imagine how many people have like crushes on me or feelings for me and same for you like I'm sure a bunch of people like even if it's just through Instagram or YouTube have crushes on you and they'll never tell you like speak up you only live one life speak up coming from the shyest person in the world myself I will make a move if it's needed. Like if For like sure. I like you have to. Mhm. Mm Cuz like why wouldn't you? Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't you? You're silly not to. Mm -hmm. And I am so blunt and it's almost like <laughs> in a bad way, but <laughs> I'll like I'll make it so known if I'm interested in you. Like so known. You would have to be Helen Keller to miss the signs that I give you. <laughs> so I just wish more people took initiative, but from what I've been told from friends over the years that I come off as very intimidating, like that strong, confident energy, and people are intimidated by that, so they don't want to approach me. Mm -hmm. But it's like, to me, I'm the least intimidating person I know. Yeah, I've been so, actively trying to unfold my arms in public. <laughs> all the time, all the time since we went through that. And I went out the other day, and I was standing there like this, but I was so over being out, and I was like, I don't even care. I actually don't want anyone to come at me right now, so I don't care. But... Yeah, I'm just like, I'm not intimidating at all. So people need to pull up their big girl pants and say something. Speak up. Speak, Speak up. up. For real. Annoying. Like, we're grown. And I hate the whole Instagram shit. You know how I feel about dating apps already. So I just... And it's tough for me because when I'm out in public, my type, quote unquote type, is girls that don't look like they're lesbians. So it's so hard because... Relatable. One, I have a low-key fear of rejection, even though I kind of don't, but... I think we kind of all do. Absolutely. I think everyone does a little bit. And mm -hmm. I'll embarrass myself, that's fine, but, like, if you shoot me down, I'm like, that's an ego hit. Oh, that's an ego God. hit, you know? So it's it's hard for me to approach girls in public because I'm like... I, I had a two-year recovery period from being rejected. <laughs> <laughs> Hibernation. I can't talk to anyone. But no, it's hard for me to approach people in public because I'm like, I don't know if you're like really straight or you're actually a big lesbian. Mm -hmm. So, but surprisingly, like a lot of girls that I've, I mean, every girl I've dated in the past for the most part, like none of them look gay. So mm -hmm. you'd be surprised. But that's why I need more of these Batty bitches to come up to me say mm -hmm. something to me because you're giving so, exactly you, you please you can't miss it you can't uh -huh. miss it i i should walk around with a sign that says i'm a lesbian like that's how obvious it is <laughs> so i just we're gonna do better though i'm gonna go up to people and start shooting my shot and i've done it once before funny story before we get started mm -hmm. i had gone to the beach a few years ago with like all of our friends and I saw this girl and she looked really cute. And I was like, I got to say something to her. I got to say something to her. And our friends were like, Lex, just fucking go do it. Just go do it. Like they were sick of hearing about it. And I finally like walked over. And it was so awkward because like at the beach, I'm like, what do I do? Like walk over and like crouch down next to you. Like, hey, I just want to like, you know, so I, I, you know, mustered up all the courage I could. And at this point I was sober. So I was, I, I wasn't drinking. So I walked over. And I crouched down like mad smooth and I was just like, hey, you know, I just want to let you know, I think you're absolutely gorgeous and I would hate myself if I didn't say anything to you. And Love as it. soon as I got a good look at her, because she had a, a hat and sunglasses on, as soon as I got a good look at her, I was like, oh no, because she had to be like pushing 40. I was like, <laughs> oh man, she's, she's totally way older than I thought. And... You know what, though? It made her day. She was like, oh, my God, really? And I was like, yeah, I just I had to tell you. And she was like, I was just telling my friends how I never want to come back here again. I had the worst day. And I was like, well, I oh. hope it gets better from here. You know, have mm -hmm. a good one. And I just walked away. So although like it didn't go how I wanted it to, like I still made that woman's day. And I <laughs> still bet woman. I bet like you even felt good after that, too. I did because I was like, you know what? Like, I would have regretted it if I didn't say anything. And how many mm. times have I been in that situation and didn't say anything? And I was like, fuck, like, I wish That's I That's what's you know? the killer to me, like, regretting, like, the unknown. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I'd rather live with knowing I try than the regret of what if. Mm -hmm. And that's a common theme of our conversations. No mm -hmm. regrets. No regrets. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no regrets. <laughs> okay. Um, before so, we start, let me turn on this fan because this episode's making me hot. 
Oh, oh. Mm. Billy's getting sweaty. I'm already sweaty from talking about Katy Perry with dark hair. <laughs> uh, and her washboard okay. abs. Like, I want to look like that, but I also enjoy snacking too much, and I also hate well, that's things. why working out has to be our addiction. <laughs> I don't want it to be, Billy. I don't want it to be. <laughs> Neither do I. I'm gonna. I'm really gonna get into it. I. I'm gonna. I'm gonna sign up for the gym this week. I'm gonna do it. We'll we'll circle back next week. <laughs> okay. <laughs> don't put me on blast. Shut up. <laughs> okay. Are you cool down? The fans on. Yeah. You have your water. I feel much better now because this is <laughs> gonna be. You're in the hot seat. I got some oh, good shit. questions. Okay. And like, so I'm going to ask you a few questions, like fun, you know, questions, and I'll give my answer after also. I don't know what okay. you have prepared, but we'll just kind of. Yeah. Do you I, own, I own it. This might have to be a two-parter. <laughs> it could be. It definitely uh-huh. could be. Okay. Mm-hmm. So first question. Reminder to everyone, this is our potential dating profiles, our online dating profiles. So this is how we're presenting it. Are you looking for something serious or more fun? I already know the answer to that. But definitely more fun. <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding. As serious I could as it could, could Billy's possibly already to be. Get married tomorrow. I will get married tomorrow. <laughs> I I think I'm I'm super open minded when it open minded when it comes to everything with relationships. I am like f- not fresh out, but like I was in a long relation slash situationship, so I don't want to say I'm looking for anything super serious right now, but I'm not opposed to Mm -hmm. it. Like, I guess I would say I'm looking for something more fun, casual, just hanging out, and if we catch a vibe, you know, it could develop into something more serious, but I'm not looking to meet someone to get married tomorrow. So, like, short-term, open to long? Definitely. But I feel like it just, oh, no one can casually date anymore, I feel like. I feel like people date or, to get married, which, like, I understand, but. I mean, I guess it's, it's like, heavy one way or heavy the other. Yes. Yes. Either they're, like, especially super into hookup in, culture. Especially or... in gay men world. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm looking for a fun time meeting new people, but open to something long-term and serious if it falls that way. Okay. Cool. <laughs> Next Love question. That. Do you expect your date to pay on the first date? Judgment free zone. Absolutely. <laughs> Love it. Um, well, I mean, I guess it depends on who's asking who out. Okay. I, I would say. So, I mean, I'm definitely not opposed. It's not like a deal breaker thing. And if I feel like I was the one that like really like trying to think on my last date like i probably didn't pay like let's be real 100 years ago (laughs) early 2023 not too Um, bad so you're saying whoever whoever is the aggressor should pay in your mm -hmm. mind Mm -hmm. okay i mean if you're in a straight relationship the man should pay and i stand on that first date definitely yeah yeah i think in terms of like chivalry like that's i know it's so old school but You're trying to court someone. You're trying to win them over. Like, I think that's the least you can do. If you Mm -hmm. can't afford to take someone on a date, then you shouldn't be dating. Mm -hmm. So I guess where I stand with that, even if someone were to ask me out, I always want to pay. Definitely first date. I always want to pay. And the thing is, I want you to at least attempt. Like, go for the reach. Go to take out your wallet or something. Let's And let me... Let me, like, say, no, 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 seriously, I got it. But, like, if you don't make any attempt and, like, the check comes and you just sit there. eh, Then that's just weird. See ya. Yeah. There won't Mm -hmm. be a second date. I have no Mm -hmm. time for that. Okay. So you expect them to pay for you and I want to pay on the first date. Take notes. I know. I don't (laughs) I said. That's not what I said. I said it depends who initiates the date, which it's usually not me exactly. So... Okay. Take that as so. Like yes is. and no, yes and mm-hmm. no. Whoever initiates should pay. Mm-hmm. Okay. But also, like my first date, like I don't want like dinner. Like I would love like to just like go for Wait, like a don't, walk. Wait, there's oh. that's that's leading okay. to more questions. That's okay. Thank you, <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. 
Next question. I guess I could go into that, even though that was two questions away, but I'll go into that one now. <laughs> Would you rather a romantic dinner and a movie or mini golf and a diner? Definitely mini golf and a Same. diner. I want fun, ha ha he he, first date vibes. Yeah, I think a movie date should be more of a like, even like a third date. Yes, because, like, where we can like heavily make out. <laughs> yeah and like i mean like the first day going to a movie it's like i want to talk to you Mm -hmm. and this movie is two hours and 15 minutes and like don't you dare try to talk to me during the movie you know so yeah i i agree with you on that i'm more of like a fun first date i need to get to see your personality if you're outgoing or not um i think everyone should take a note on that because like that's what you should be doing definitely (laughs) and i can't tell you how many dudes i talk to at my job who think it's still like a dinner or movie and i'm like bro that's like that's not so the vibe stop no that's so 18 fucking hundreds for real <laughs> like <laughs> yeah do something fun and and like i said i don't want to date someone if we can't go to mini golf and you look like an idiot you know like or we go bowling and you know you're just not having fun i need someone who has that vibe so if you can't show me that on the first date there again there's not going to be a second one Mm-hmm. okay so we're on the same page more fun right. more cash and as yeah. it develops we can get into the movies and the romantic dinners later on i also don't want you to see me eating you know a 16 ounce steak on our first date mm-hmm. i have too much anxiety to be eating in general yeah so no yeah. i'll do i'll do some light fare nothing nothing mm-hmm. crazy yeah okay so next question what's your favorite thing about a first date nothing really i guess when you go first i love first dates i love the whole courting someone i'm gonna pick you up in my car i get a car wash that day like i'm trying to flex on you i i don't know i just love the whole newness of it it's exciting i think it's so cool when people say that they love going on first dates i wish more people would go on first dates with me even if it's just a friend like i love that excitement that you get because it's a feeling that doesn't happen often you know and sometimes Mm -hmm. listen i've been on a few shitty first dates where you're like this is fucking brutal i want to crawl into a hole but more times than not there's so much fun and like i'm a conversationalist so i can easily get to know someone and I don't know. I just, I love the whole thing about it. Like I said, I pick you up. We go somewhere fun. I take you home. Maybe a little smooch, maybe not, but most likely yes. What's your What's your take I, on kissing on the first date? I've only ever done that. Yeah. I Even on the one that I wasn't really crazy about. I, I think I'm usually a yes. Like usually my first dates go really well and I usually like a fucking smooch is a smooch who cares I, i've fucking i've kissed all my friends <laughs> you know it's not that serious mm-hmm. mine um, was actually pretty hot and heavy both times <laughs> whoa whoa i think i've only not kissed on one first date but in my defense i also didn't know it was a first date and it was so bad so that was a no mm-hmm. for me but yeah mm-hmm. i'm totally cool with it like if the vibe is right i'll make a move i'll make a move i mean so i guess to answer the question i would say like If I had someone like you, (laughs) like, that would be, like, fantastic. So, I mean, the best feeling to me would be, like, the initial, like, click feeling to Mm -hmm. know that, like, the rest of everything's, like, going to be okay. And, like, you could just, like, be you or whatever. Because, I mean, I'm always in, like scared of rejection mode Mm. so it's very hard for me to be excited until to like really get to know you if you're operating with that mindset on a date you'd have to let your (sighs) true colors come through maybe that's why you don't get any second dates billy (laughs) i was gonna say yeah i mean but like since you're so like on edge like that how do you feel about if someone was like oh can i pick you up because I know that's like a little bit of a, it's like not a thing I, anymore. No, I, I, even when you said that, I was like, no. I will like, only I, do I, it if I already know you-ish. Like, mm-hmm. I would never pick up like a Tinder date, you know? Yeah, like I, I definitely, I mean, ideally I would love someone to come pick me up. 
but I'm absolutely driving myself so yeah. I can run Yeah, away. definitely. And like I said, I'm only doing that if I like know who you are. Like we, I, I, I know you're not a serial killer and uh-huh. you wouldn't feel uncomfortable with Ideally, me yeah. Ideally, yes. But I totally mm-hmm. am also understanding of people want to have their own cars because that's me. Like I want to be able to go on my own terms. Yeah. Okay, cool. Good, good answers. Good questions. And I guess my last question, I guess this is more of like a serious relationship question. What's a non-negotiable in your next relationship? For me, I'll, I'll let you think about this. For me, it would have to be communication in general, just being able to fearlessly tell me how you're feeling. You know, like don't withhold things because you're afraid it's going to hurt me because that only comes back to bite you in the ass later on. I want to have open communication. I want to make it a safe space for you to tell me that something I did was fucked up or something you did was fucked up or I like this or I didn't like that. So communication, like, but hardcore communication, that's a non-negotiable, non-negotiable. Mm-hmm. I mean, communication is key. Um, it is. No, it really is. And like, I've been in so many relationships where like, I had to pull the words out of their mouth. And I'm like, I'm not a mind reader. And that's something I've learned the older I've gotten because I kind of always just assume my my partner should know how I feel. And people are living in their own lives. They're not thinking about you that much. Even if they love you to death, like people are worried about themselves. Unfortunately, everyone is mostly selfish. It's not a bad thing, but you can't assume people know what you're thinking or you're feeling. So Mm -hmm. if something's bothering you, you need to tell that. Yeah, for me, the communication, like, isn't a problem. Like, I wear my heart on my sleeve. Mm -hmm. So, like, can you repeat the question again, please? What's a non-negotiable in your next relationship? Something that you have a hard line. Like, this is either, like, we're doing this or nothing at all. I feel like I have a good answer, but this is, like, hard on the spot. I mean, of course, I guess I would have to agree with you. Communication. Okay. Okay. But I mean, I mean, I it also have a should few. just go with the fuck without saying. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. So I'm trying that to think of like being of an the adult bar. in a relationship. You know, trust, communication—they all go hand in hand. And like, and if we don't have that, I don't want a relationship with you. Hmm. I mean, you just better learn my love language and vice versa. And like, Ooh, we have to do a test on one of our next episodes. Like, what's our love I, language? I would like to. I was gonna say I would love to do an episode where we break down even each one. Mm-hmm. Like kind of I'm thing. Into and it. talk about I have ours. that book, like the five. Because love languages. there's also, I might have that too. Because it's also like your love language and then the love language that you give. Like it's different. Mm-hmm. So I just think that's very interesting. And and. Obviously, when you're an adolescent in in relationships, you don't think about those things as thorough. But some ha- someone having a different love language than you is literally you trying to learn to speak Spanish when you only know mm-hmm. English. It's that mm-hmm. different, and that's something that I've been working on understanding that maybe I need words of affirmation, but maybe they prefer acts of service. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. But not to shoot my own horn, <laughs> I do all of it. <laughs> I'm bilingual, multilingual. I, I'm bad at gift giving. Okay. You're bad at it or you're about it? I'm bad at it. Oh, I'm a great gift giver. I'm so thoughtful when it comes to gift giving. You can mention something once and I'll remember it and you're getting that, like, even if it's three years from now. Love it. I usually just get clothes and that's so boring. <laughs> no, I'm I'm I- really thorough about gift giving. I just care too much about everyone else and I get so disappointed when no one gives me that energy in return, but I also pick the wrong people. Like Mm -hmm. I, people ask me, what's my type? And I don't even answer that question anymore because clearly my type is toxic. So (laughs) I am going into the next chapter of my life, my single adult 30 life with, I don't have a type. I don't want a bad bitch. That whole, like, I'm a bad bitch mentality is so cringe please leave it at the door because the bad bitches need therapy and they usually Mm -hmm. have daddy issues. So Mm -hmm. I want a regular girl, like a pretty girl. We have to have, you know, some kind of physical attraction there. You can't be, you know, not my type at all, but pretty Mm -hmm. girl. I just want a good person. 
and I mm-hmm. want someone who reciprocates as much effort as I put in, which I know is going to be really hard to find, but I would like to think there's 8 billion people in the world. Someone's got to match my energy. Someone out there, I'm putting it out there into the universe. Someone is going to match my energy. Yeah. Because I, I will give you the shirt off my back. I will light myself mm-hmm. on fire to set you, to make sure you're warm. You know, like, I guess it's to a fault, but mm-hmm. I also don't communication, completely Communication and reciprocation reciprocation is that Reciprocity. the same thing yeah when you reciprocate like give back to someone yeah like i feel like i'm always the giver like i like i that's like a good hard line thing like if i feel like it's just a selfish type of person mm-hmm. or like just not appreciative yeah i think like, a lot of that also comes from fear of rejection and that's mm. something I've learned over time. That's how I used to be like super heavy with the give, 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 give and hope because I gave so much, they won't turn me away. But a lot of the mm-hmm. times that does push people away. Mm-hmm. It really does. So I try not to overcompensate by any means. I really try to be my true authentic self. And it's scary because when you're yourself and someone doesn't like you, you're like, oh, like I'm just being me and you don't like me. It hurts. But you're like, you know what? better that i know now instead of me showing Mm -hmm. my true self six months from now and then i find out you don't really fuck with me who i am Mm -hmm. so that's i guess i mean all these things should be non-negotiables in relationships like you have to love and accept me for exactly who i am Uh uh-huh period 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 Mm -hmm. and it's just that was your last question right yeah i only had a few questions lined up I thought about these while I was sitting on the beach yesterday, questioning the meaning of life, <laughs> watching the sunset. How romantic. Thinking about the next girl I'm going to take on a walk on the beach with. <laughs> Vibes. I low-key love like a long romantic walk on the beach. Same. I love like a park date. The last you know. guy that told me, let's go like night swimming, ghosted me as well. So that's what I think about. I think you attract the ghost because you give off witchy energy. You have oh. the dark energy. The dead are attracted to you. Uh, you need to sage. Know. Do you sage? Do you believe in sage? I, yeah, I have sage over there. I I like to sage. I think it's time. Once every few months. No, I think, you know what? Mercury exits retrograde tomorrow. I think it's a nice day. Tonight, I'm going to sage. You have to open all the doors, all the windows, so that bad energy can escape. You hit every mm-hmm. corner, every spot, and mm-hmm. you clear the negative energy. And I do it over myself. I spin it around my head. I, like, literally, like, cover myself in the sage smoke. And something about it feels therapeutic. Like, I actually feel better after so I think we're totally. gonna we're gonna do a nice sage tonight, you and I. I think so. yes. Out with the old, in with the new, new energy, people who are gonna love us for who we are, and take us out on dates, <laughs> and not ghost us. And not ghost us. I was gonna say. Oh. So do you have anything that you want? I I told you to write some things down. Did you do your homework? You have notes. Mm-hmm. I do he has have over a thousand words written in notes. So <laughs> I wish I could see the number because it's actually a lot, but. What do you think about me, like, reading my Tinder thing to you? Oh, like your profile? Yes. We're going to critique. I love it. Give it to (laughs) me. Show me to me, Rachel. (laughs) So before, is that a friend's joke? No. It's a, I was going to say Vine. It's a TikTok thing. You've never seen that? Uh Uh-uh. That's one of the funniest TikTok sounds ever. Oh, no. I'll send you the video, and it's, it's so funny. This girl like pranked her mom she was like mom jesus christ was spotted she was like where where show me to me rachel where and she was like crying this mom was literally crying because she thought jesus was seen on earth and i'll have to send it to you but yeah show me to me rachel that's that's hilarious that's a tiktok thing it was honestly really funny and i didn't know that that was like the original sound i was just saying show me to me rachel for months and i had no idea that it was from that but yeah okay Give me, give me the goods. Tell me what we got. Also, Tinder, like, why w- you wouldn't try another one? Like, have you tried any other apps? Like, Hinge? I feel like Hinge sweetie, is a good one. Sweetie. <laughs> Quiet down back there. I'm on all of them. I'm crying. I'm not on all. Well, I'm on three of them. I'm on 
all of them except Grinder. Yeah, ew. Tinder, Bumble, and Hinge. I use okay. Bumble the least for sure. I love Hinge the most, but it gives to the cut less you off, people. I I never use Bumble, but I've heard from my male clients that the girl has to reach out to you first. How does that work when you're a male? With a gay, it's the same thing as anything else. Oh, so it's it's nothing special then. Mm. So there's really no reason to use it. Yeah, it's kind of cringe to be on them all, but I always think about like if the person sees me on multiple, then they're on multiple. So like, who are they to judge? <laughs> yeah so definitely. and like i just i need to keep my situation open All avenues because open. <laughs> because i don't leave the house <laughs> which is what we're gonna start working on we're gonna get you out right okay, um so, so before i just a little preface preface um i don't like a long like bio like i kind of like it to the point like kind of thing like if you want to get mm-hmm. to know me like you will speak up I can't wait um, to support. It's just, it's simple and short. From New York City, South Florida for seven years, bad at small talk, looking for something real, friends, long-term relationship, love exploring, cooking, TV shows, music, and hanging out with the emoji guy that has his hands behind his head, like chilling. Okay. And then, this is gay culture. Well, I guess, what's your first thought? Not bad. It kind of tells me all I need to know. A little basic, but it's so mind. hard to summarize yourself in three sentences. Yeah, but I, I think don't... that touches on everything. Yeah, I feel like it's actually pretty good. I'd rather be basic than like giving the ick of too much. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yes. Um, and then this, I want to know your opinion because like I kind of go back and forth on it. This is very like online dating gay culture vibe. Like men, okay. gay men. I have the arrow pointing down to clarify that I'm a bottom. Stop. <laughs> so like a lot of times gays will have like the verse sign or like the bottom uh-huh. or the top. So my thing with this, I hate to like do it because like it's so like kind of sexual, I guess. Mm-hmm. But I like don't that's want giving, time. You're trying to hook up. Yes. But I don't want to waste my time, especially, or anyone else's. That, as a gay person that's, like, not verse, I think other gay men could really relate to. There's so many levels to, like, okay, I like this person, but do they, like, and then you, like, Mm -hmm. there's so many things. So I, as much as I... Is it really that deep, though? It kind of is. It kind of is, because, like... Like, I feel like you're kind of... I mean, listen, like, I obviously you know nothing about that but i don't know like if if you really l- grow to love someone and you have a little i mean yeah i guess that's a big thing it's like, a you know, really it's big there. thing i don't want to go on a date with someone that's a complete bottom mm. oh, as as weird as that like sounds no, but I like we're understand. like wasting each other's time yeah it's just like something I'm just But is it a waste attracted. of time if you still meet someone and like they're cool and you end up being friendly with them? Friends. You know, because I <laughs> yes. I told you I met a girl on a on a dating app one time and we ended up being friends, you know, but if you're putting that out there and you're just judging someone based off of their sexual preferences, like you're closing yourself off to other potential relationships and connections. I always say that I only top if I'm in love. <laughs> there you go. And you're closing off to that. But I mean, that being said, in like my five-year relationship, I did it maybe three times. <laughs> okay. But you're also a different person now. You're grown. That was years mm-hmm. ago. And I just think by putting that, you're almost sending the wrong message. Even though you said looking for, you know, long term. Yeah, that's whatever, what I'm... Blah, blah, blah. That's like kind of my rebuttal because i feel like i'm real and then i show what it is down below i think you should take that out and, and do an experiment okay take it out okay. for a few weeks see if you get any new bites yeah it's just i don't want someone and to like, think i'm like a dumb top like <laughs> no i know but like i said what if you meet also... someone and your your feelings change and you're like oh i want to yeah you know like you never know you can't close your mind i never like that. know but 
honest. I guess I kind of know. I mean, I would never yes, become but like a I top. said, you're also a 30 year old man now. Mm-hmm. Things change. Interesting. I I wanted to hear your response about this because. Like, it's something that I have removed, I put back. But I also find myself, like, when they match on, like, Hinge, because I only have that on Tinder, so I guess okay. I kind of experiment. But, like, when I'm on Hinge, I'm like, oh, they don't know. Like, <laughs> But that's also something I think that you don't need to disclose immediately. I got it. But, like, I feel like gay men are hypersexualized, you know, and that's, like, something they have to disclose from the jump. Mm-hmm. Whereas, like... I don't know. It's just I I want to get married tomorrow. So (laughs) so it's just like let's just fucking put it out there and like I I think also having that mindset I was I was scrolling on Reddit in the dating advice subreddit and people can feel the desperation through the phone. You know so you saying you want to get married tomorrow you want to get married tomorrow like maybe not not to i mean obviously i don't have that on i don't have that on. no i know that but like how can i put this like i think that's something you can just sense it's giving desperate i uh, totally yes and i think that's a turnoff because Mm. that tells me you don't really care so much about the person as much as the act of wanting to be in a relationship Mm -hmm. obviously you have to like the person but i think you're more focused on the idea of boyfriend rather than a a partner who's gonna uplift you and provide you all these great things you're just focused on i want a boyfriend i want a husband not i want to i want to wait for a great person who's gonna make me better well i'm sorry that i've been single for seven years (laughs) i understand and and i guess i can't relate because the longest i've been single in my adult life was like a year and a half ish but it also good. i've learned and i know it's so cliche like it comes when you least expect it mm-hmm. pause <laughs> <laughs> it happens when you least expect it really like every relationship that i've had serious adult relationship that i've had has happened when i wasn't looking mm-hmm. it's actually crazy so that's why i almost want to like give up but then i'm also like well shoot or shoot Mm-hmm. You know, you miss a hundred percent of the shots you don't take. Yeah, <laughs> love that saying. So I don't know. It's it's a catch twenty two. Right. Can't win them all. Okay, so I'm happy we discussed that. That's very interesting. We're, I'll let that process gonna, and simmer. We're fix up your your Tinder profile. Also, Tinder is like gives super hookup vibes. It's all perspective. I've been on it for so long, and I've never been about the hookup so like there's other people that are not about the hookup and like i know people that are married from tinder i guess i do know a few people that have met on like bumble and and actually the people's dog i'm gonna watch tomorrow i'm pretty sure they met on bumble (laughs) so maybe you should stick more to bumble i think bumble is more looking for a serious relationship that's just the vibe i get I think it's all the also, same. Also, what are your what, so what are your parameters? What are, what are, what are like your age range and stuff I like that? I recently made it higher. I think I had it at twenty six to like forty, and then I now have it at twenty nine to thirty eight. Okay. Because I realized forty, that's fine, but that's just, it is like too high in a way. And then I really don't want to date someone younger. No, no. So. I think especially for men, I think women can get away with it more. But even still, like I just think of me now as a thirty year old woman versus me at twenty five even and I'm like, Ew, yikes. It's... But also everyone's on their own timeline and mm-hmm. you know, there's people who at twenty five were way further in life than I was. Mm-hmm. So you kinda can't judge. But if I had to like set a an age range, it would probably be twenty eight to like 33 i feel like i can't relate with anyone older than that although my two sisters are in their mid-30s and like they're my besties Mm -hmm. you know so 33 that's pretty low it is but like i just i don't know visually i'm also a little closed-minded when it comes to this and i've really been trying to open my mind because i do know people who have a pretty big age gap in their relationships and like 
I just picture me dating a 35 year old woman and I'm like to me that just seems so far away from now like 35 that's giving like boss bitch you know like independent mm-hmm. and I'm just like I still live at home. I'm just a baby. Yeah. But like, I know like people tell me and people give me reassurance. Like Lex, you're doing a lot. Like you're, you're a lot further than you think you are. And I, and I kind of know that, but I forget. You're on the track that you should be on. I I so am. But also I don't think it'll be a bad thing, I guess, to date up because then it would kind of make you want to rise up to that. Rise, yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I just, I guess I'm trying not to think about it so much. Because age is just a number, and uh-huh. I've met 35-year-old men who act like they're 24. So mm-hmm. it, it really just depends on the person and the, and what they've been through in life and their open-mindedness. And But if I had to put a, a range on it, it would be like, t- but 28, I just feel like I think of me at 28 and me now, and I'm like, that's we're so different. We're so different. You learn so much in your late 20s. Every mm-hmm. year is like monumental to me. I could also just be a weirdo but no it's it's true it's but then i also think the reverse like what how could a 38 year old man maybe 38's a little but like how can a 40 year old man a 40 year old man what does he see in you an almost 31 year old man you know like i mean that's yeah i don't get it but that's where it gets weird for me like, how are you relating to someone that's nine plus years younger? Mm-hmm. I think I think the absolute, like, max in age is, like, five, maybe six year difference. Maybe. Depending I on the person. I would say, for, I mean, I, that's all personal preference. But for me, yeah. definitely no more than 10 years. And that's really pushing it. That's so pushing it. I feel like eight years for me which is why i put it to 38 okay okay yeah i guess i like i said i'm a little close-minded when it comes to the age thing Mm -hmm. and whenever people like want to date someone below 25 and they're above 30 it's like what the fuck are you like how do you want that like i just don't get yeah and that's that's... kind of how i feel right now Mm -hmm. like even 25 like i just that's i don't know oh wait (laughs) yeah 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 <laughs> and it just let that just came in my hand. like no it's, but like that's how that's where i'm at right now you situational know? i guess <laughs> let's see how this comes to fruition i can't wait to watch this back in a few months but <laughs> no like that's that's where i'm at my roadblock oh, right 25 like i'm trying to be open-minded but mm-hmm. i don't I, I don't know 25 is definitely my cutoff i always think of my cutoff too actually as i can't date anyone younger than my brother Mm. Ooh, he's 24 so 25 is the lowest i'm going yeah and then i guess also i i try to like play devil's advocate in terms of like age but like if i'm dating someone younger i'm like well they're gonna keep me young you know oh you girls keep me young I you mean, know maybe, maybe that's re- a good thing I mean, yeah but do i want that i th- but i i think also i'm a little too hard on myself in terms of like you need to do this in life and maybe I need a little more fun. Maybe mm-hmm. I need someone who's a little more youthful. I think right now in the age that we are, this is all making sense, but cause we're at such a kind of transitional age of young to older. So mm-hmm. like by the time we're 45 and if we're single, like maybe I'll be hitting up the cute boys. <laughs> like, I don't know. Yeah. But also one of Hopefully my clients not. who I, who I've developed a really great relationship with, he's like in his mid forties, he was like, Lex, things, certain things don't change with age. He's like, you know, when I was 25, I wanted a motorcycle. And I thought when I was older, I'd grow out of it. Guess what? I'm 45. I still want a motorcycle. You know, those are like fundamental things. Like fundamentals don't change. Mm-hmm. Obviously your maturity and your outlook on life changes, but there's just some things that don't change. So if you're vibing with someone and they're a little younger, like that's not going to change. You know, yeah. you're still going to vibe with them. And he and he emphasized he also told me his ex-wife and him had an 11 year difference. I'm like, well, maybe that's why it didn't work because you were 11 years apart. But, mm-hmm. you know, I also think it's different for men not to jump yeah. around. But all the men clients I talk to, I ask them how they feel about an age gap, specifically six years. And <laughs> they're like, yeah, that's not that bad. 
And I'm like, really? Like, I don't know, intellectually. Like, I'm an intellect. Like, I really like to think I'm a really intellectual person. I like having deep, meaningful conversations. And I just can't see myself having that with someone who's less than 25 years old. Mm -hmm. Your brain is scientifically not even developed until you're 25. Scientifically. Do I have my book here? Yep, here it is. Love my, my books. Change your brain, change your life <laughs> before 25. Before 25 because your brain is developed at 25. Mm. And unfortunately, I did not read this before I turned 25. I actually started reading it when I was 26. I was like, let me start reading this now, I guess. But your brain's literally not developed fully until you're 25. Mm-hmm. So that's how I feel. I'm a very factual person. The facts are the facts, sweetie. Facts are facts. But I need to open my mind. And I'm not looking for a serious relationship, so I can date someone younger right now. Right. (laughs) I guess. I don't know. Someone just let me take them on a date, please. I just want to pick you up in my sexy car, take you out, have some fun, and give you a smooch. Holler at me, please. And it's fall. It's not fall yet. Let me pump the brakes. Let me not do that. It's almost fall. I want to go to the pumpkin patch. I want to do all that spooky stuff. Let's watch fun fall movies. I have a cute little setup in my living room. I decorate it really nice. Come on. Like, (laughs) that's what I want. I want all that, but, like, not the serious commitment. Which is, like, fucked up, I guess. (laughs) I want to have my cake and eat it, too. Love that for you, but I think if you're down to that, you're going to be in love. (laughs) Yes, and I know myself. I fall in love pretty fast. I know. I, I mean, fall I in love so fast same. because I, I am so easy to see the good in someone and the potential. But that's one thing I have to stop going off potential. Mm-hmm. Potential is a killer. You have to go on the or your you. idea of what the relationship yes. would be, mm-hmm. like what they could develop into. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, they could be this and we could be that. But like, no, I have to go based on what they're showing me. It's all about the now. Yes, absolutely. Mm-hmm. So I also don't know what the fuck I'm doing. Like, I, I, <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing. I could be in a relationship next week for all I know. Mm-hmm. All my friends poke fun at me because I say, like, yeah, I don't want a relationship. But then it's like, guess what, guys? I have a girlfriend, <laughs> you know? So they know. Mm-hmm. They know. Yeah. <laughs> we could end this maybe on three more questions of mine. One being sexy, one being meaningful, one being personal okay love that and then we'll bring her home okay we'll do sexy first okay, which i feel nervous. like i should have did third but no it's like silly or not that serious um is there a compliment you've received that made you feel incredibly sexy or confident or i guess that's the question but or maybe like what would be a compliment that would make you feel incredibly sexy is that a good question it is a good question it's just hard to answer. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever gotten a compliment where I'm like, oh, you know, people often tell me not to toot my own horn, but you have beautiful eyes. You know, you have a great smile. Like, back, I back. hear these things, you know, but I've never gotten like a one a one line or compliment that like blew my socks off. You know, I'm more of like pour your heart out in a paragraph and that can hit me like I'm mm-hmm. more about the sentimental like you mean so much to me you know i i I recognize all the good that you do for everyone like compliment me on my soul compliment me on who i am as a person not the appearance because sweetie i know i got great eyes and great smile you know but yeah like i know i got great eyes and a great smile no offense but compliment me on who i am internally yes that is a great response those roll off my shoulder they really do they're they're a dime a dozen i have people telling me that all the time but tell me what you like about who i am internally i i guess i have yet to receive that compliment Mm. what about you retweet i mean if someone said something just like a deeper compliment i'd Mm -hmm. probably be wet (laughs) yeah no literally (laughs) like that's that's what i want yeah or just like if someone got more of like my deepness just Mm -hmm. like really saw me yeah (laughs) i uh i met someone i think i told you this my friend when i went out to the marina cafe my friend's co-worker came there and he told me he was like i think you're the coolest person here and i don't even have to talk to everyone else and compliment like i love that compliment because like we're in a a place with over 100 people and like you already know my vibe love that you know it's like that's a fun compliment like you're the coolest one here because 
bitch, I know. <laughs> I know. Respect the drip. I, I told, like, a bartender once that I loved her vibe, and she, like, lit up. Like, And then mm-hmm. I actually, there's, like, a meme, like, that's one of the best things you, like, you could say to a person, and I didn't even know that. But, like, it literally made her, like, glow. And I was like, yay. <laughs> because I think now, as a, as a culture and a generation, we're shifting more on that deeper level. Like I said, mm-hmm. people online can tell you you're sexy, you're this, you're that. But to pick up on someone's energy and their, their vibe, that's a different level. And that's what people want now. Okay, good question. Katie. Next Katie. one. Um, do you want meaningful or personal? Let's do meaningful. What's an experience in your life that deeply shaped who you are today? I guess I'll go broad answer. And I guess I would say my first whole relationship, like in general, that I've had as an adult from, I think I was like, I mean, I guess 21, you're not really an adult, but 21 to 24, that whole relationship without that, I would not be who I am between the the highs and the lows. Like, I've never experienced a love and comfort and what's the word? Reassurance. I've never felt something so strong from a person outside of that relationship, but I've also never felt so much pain and heartbreak and betrayal. Mm -hmm. That gave me all of it. And without that whole relationship, I would not be nearly the person I am today because I've learned what love feels like at its best and at its absolute fucking worst what love feels like Mm -hmm. so i would say that that relationship love that for me i think would be going away to college in Mm -hmm. orlando and like Mm -hmm. becoming a person on my own and i guess my youtube channel finding my true like creative like passion of doing that definitely love that And you know what's funny? I was supposed to go away to college and I came home like two weeks after I went away to University of Tampa because I had mono and I ended up not going to school there. So I went to CSI. I wouldn't have met that ex-girlfriend if I was away at school because Mm. I had met her a few months after that. Mm. So like the dominoes of everything. But yeah. Interesting. What life can do. Mm -hmm. Life be life and. Totes. Okay. And last question personal now how much is in your bank account okay (laughs) what's a quality in yourself that you're really proud of and hope your future partner values i have a few i think my understanding my open-mindedness and my empathy when i tell you i pride myself on being really open-minded and i want to hear all sides of the story in order for me to improve and maybe change my train of thought and the way i think about things I'm also so caring and so empathetic towards people, almost to a fault, but I want you to recognize that in me. Like, I need you to see that and appreciate Mm -hmm. that because not everyone has that. Not everyone Mm -hmm. has that. For me, I think just appreciating the love I give and the humor and the good vibes and basically everything that you said. (laughs) <laughs> for sure just me as a person appreciate me because i'm a one-on-one bitch uh we have like 30 seconds left and i yeah. love if we just wrap it up <laughs> really quickly wrap it up thank you everyone thank for you listening guys. to this week's episode of young this was so much podcast. fun this was a lot of fun um maybe we'll get a few dates from this don't be mm-hmm. shy like shoot or shoot mm-hmm. you miss 100 percent of the chances you don't take so absolutely please rate our podcast five stars on all platforms our DMs are open 12 seconds left. for for take for conversations and we'll see you next week. Peace, love and light. Peace, guys. love and light. <laughs> Bye. Bye.